am a certified veterinary technician here at Mount Laurel Animal Hospital who has had special training in dentistry. This is Stevie, who's going to be around today with us also. Today I wanted to talk to you about periodontal disease and how you can help at home with, your, with brushing your pet's teeth. Periodontal disease uh, is something that um, only, only progresses and it does get worse. When puppies are young and, and small, like how, how small Stevie is, this is the time where we can train her and, and uh, have you intervene and do some home care with them so we don't end up with periodontal disease later in life. Most pets, unfortunately, do have periodontal disease, roughly about 80% of our adult dogs that we see. Um, periodontal disease is easy to prevent, but it does take a dedicated owner uh, and a pet that actually will tolerate the home care at home. So we'll talk about some things that we can do to help with that. A normal mouth would look like this picture here. So the, these are for the teeth and then this pink area is the gums. We rarely see normal teeth in our veterinary patients just because um, the home care is something that not everybody can do. So we should see a nice, nice pink gum uh, right here uh, without being any red, it should be nice and pink to pale pink. And then we have the crown of the tooth, which is, which is white in color. When there is periodontal disease, it looks something a little bit more like this and it could look a little bit more severe than this also. So the gums here uh, become puffy and swollen because of the inflammation in the teeth. There is a little space that is between the tooth and the gum line called the gingival sulcus. The space in a dog is roughly about three millimeters. And what happens when plaque and bacteria go up into that little bit of space, the gum tissue reacts. And then we get something that looks like this. So the gums become swollen, they become more red, they become puffy uh, because of the inflammation. As that progresses, this eventually leads to bone loss um, that holds the tooth in place. And then as it continues to progress, teeth can become mobile and eventually uh, in severe cases, the teeth can fall out. So when they're young is when we want to try to condition puppies uh, and dogs to accept teeth brushing so we can halt the process and prevent it from end stage periodontal disease, which would be tooth loss. Things that we can do at home, the best thing that you can do is teeth brushing. To brush the teeth, uh, we do need to have um, a dog that's accepting of brushing the teeth. And it can be a little bit of a process to start. Um, it's, it's conditioning them to accept it. Uh, and and we'll, we'll talk about that with, with Stevie because we can start right away when you, when you first get your puppy or dog. Um, but once we get the conditioning down and getting them to accept it, Brushing the teeth uh, should be something that is rewarding and positive. We don't want you to fight with your dog or when you grab your toothbrush, we don't want the dog to be like, oh no, and then have, and have him or her run away from you. It should be a fun time. So we want to provide reward and provide treats when, uh, when, when, this, is, when this happens. Brushing the teeth should be done every day. Um, if you do it once a week, it's not gonna, uh, the benefit will not, will not help. Uh, every other day is okay, but once you get beyond that, we're not going to get the benefit of brushing the teeth. When we do brush the teeth, I like to use a human toothbrush. Depending on the size of the dog, um, the toothbrush that we use for ourselves is perfect for like a medium or a large breed dog. Um, a little puppy, uh, Stevie size, or a toy breed. I actually really like to use the pediatric toothbrushes. They uh, meant for babies, toddlers. Um, they have a, a, a toothbrush head that's about half the size of this and a little round area. And the bristles are very, very soft. The pet toothbrushes are okay, but sometimes I feel that the bristles are not soft enough. So I like to use a soft human grade toothbrush and you would change it out as often as you change your toothbrush. So maybe every couple months or so, or, or six months or so, replace that toothbrush. Um, so if you have a pet that isn't used to brushing the teeth and their teeth are, uh, you know, maybe they're, they're not used to being brushed, the gum tissues, uh, it, you might notice a little bit of blood on the toothbrush or like a little red tinged on, on the brush. Um, that should subside over time the more often as you brush the teeth. But I would say, make sure you have your pet's teeth examined by a veterinarian first. 
Because if we do have a mouth that looks like this, or a mouth that looks like this, that actually has bone loss, it can hurt the pet to brush the teeth. It would be sore for them. And then if it's something that causes pain, because periodontal disease is a painful condition, if it is something that causes pain, they're not gonna let you do it, they're gonna fight you to do it, which is not the goal. We want them to be comfortable and we want them to look forward to, to having their teeth brushed um, because we're gonna make it fun and provide reward. When we do brush the teeth, we're gonna grab our toothbrush. Toothpaste is great. Um, but sometimes toothpaste will distract the pet from letting you do the job um, because it's meant to be tasty. They come in poultry, vanilla, mint, um, all kinds of different beef flavors. Um, but if they like it too much, sometimes I find that they chew the toothbrush head or they're just very distracted and they just want to lick the toothpaste. Um, if you don't have that problem, the paste is totally fine to use but it's actually more important the motion of the toothbrush and your technique, with how, with, which is with how you brush the tooth, the teeth, which is most important. So I like to start with a little bit of water. Stevie, what are you doing, girl? Look at Stevie, he's on my tooth line, <laughs> playing around down there. <laughs> I like to start with just using the soft bristle brush that we talked about and put a little bit of warm water on the brush and, and, that, and then that's it. If it's a, a large dog, the floor is fine. Medium-sized dog, you can do it on a couch or a small breed dog. You can even do it up on a counter surface. Um, but you wanna do it a way where they can't fight or try to really get away from you. Um, I, have, I like counters and, and, and doing it on the couch with, with them on your lap. So if we were gonna sit over here with them on my lap, this, this works well. So I would have their butt towards me and then their head in that direction or they can have their their rear end to the back of the couch and then i can use my elbow to kind of hold hold my dog this way and then i will use my non-dominant hand to actually hold the head and my right hand uh, my dominant hand to hold the toothbrush and then i could brush the teeth this way when we do start to brush the teeth i like to hold it like a pencil and this is part of conditioning first. So the lip, we do want them, the pets to be comfortable with you opening up the front lip right over, right over top of the canines. So we're gonna keep the mouth closed. At any point, we do not need to open up the mouth because that does stress them out a little bit and, and they don't like it. It's just unfavorable for them. Um, plus the most important teeth that we need to target are on the teeth on the upper part of the jaw and on the back side. Um, we don't really need to worry um, about the inside of the mouth um, because the tongue here it does it moves back and it pushes around a lot of the saliva it does a pretty good job with keeping the inside surfaces clean so we're going to focus on uh, the important parts first um, which are the upper upper teeth and then the back so we can start by conditioning our pet just to roll up the lip right over top of the canine teeth right here Sometimes it does cause a little bit of a sneeze response to them or they, and they just don't like it. If they're at the point where they really don't like that stage, then we're gonna stop with that and then we're gonna work on that part. So we're gonna roll up the lip a little bit. If they don't like that, we're gonna you know, do it and we're gonna give, give treats and let them know that this is okay. Um, that process, maybe it would just take a few times, maybe it'll take a week. Um, or it could take a little bit longer, but we do want to make sure that we're not going to fight with them um, and we want them to learn that this is okay. We want them to accept it. All right. We roll up the teeth, roll up the lip, sorry, and then hold our toothbrush like a pencil. And then we're going to put the toothbrush in the cheek area. So it's going to look like this. We're going to put the toothbrush, roll it up, into the cheek area. So. We're gonna see a little bulge here. We, we don't have to have a complete visual of the teeth. Once you have um, uh, a familiar, fil familiarity <laughs> um, of where they're located. So we're gonna roll it up, teeth, the uh, toothbrush in the back, right underneath that cheek pocket. And I'll show you on a live animal. We're going to put the toothbrush straight, but rotate it up a little bit. Now we do want the brush of the, the bristles of the toothbrush to come in contact with the tooth and the gum line. So we don't necessarily need to focus on the white part of the tooth. That we do want to see nice pearly whites, but periodontal disease actually starts at the gum line. So we want to brush the space between the gums and between the tooth. 
the gingival sulcus. So we're gonna take our toothbrush, apply the toothbrush to the teeth, rotate it up about a 45 degree angle, start at the back, and then work forward with that rotated toothbrush because as we rotate, we can get those bristles within that space as we go along. I like to start in the back because it seems to be the area that accumulates the most tartar, um, just because the cheek just kind of lays right on top of that and there's sal salivary ducts there. Um, and then when that secretes, it just kind of sits there and calculus of tartar builds up. So flat, rotate up, and then work towards the front of the mouth. It's a little tricky to know how far back to go, but you do want to go back pretty far. A good rule of thumb is if you look at the rough, the area on the corner of the eye on the side, if you go down, we want to go back that far roughly because they have molars back there. So we have our large premolar teeth, which if you open your dog's mouth, you'll be able to see that, but they have two more teeth back there also. We want to make sure that we're getting them. Once we go ahead and we do the one side, and this is fast, I would say 30 seconds. Um, it can even be a little bit less, make it quicker if your dog is not accepting of it. So wet, we're gonna go back, bristle, bristle, then we're gonna take our thumb, go to the other side, pull up the lip, tuck the toothbrush in the cheek pocket, go all the way back and then come forward again, and then we can do, do the incisors. Um, I would start with that technique. Once your pet is accepting of it and you are comfortable doing that, we can progress and even start to do the lower jaw, which is the same concept, but we're gonna rotate our brush bristles downward. So instead of rotating up at a 45 degree angle, we're gonna rotate down at a 45 degree angle this way to get that, to get that space, the gingival sulcus. Um, but the bottom jaw doesn't seem to accumulate as much as the top part of the jaw. So while you're starting out, focus only on the top part of the jaw, back of the mouth, work your way towards the front. She loves her treats, which is very good. Um, this really helps, uh, if you have a food, mo food motivated puppy, it really helps um, with getting her to accept handling, toothbrushing, nail trims, ear cleaning, all, all of those things. So with a little puppy like her, we don't have to um, really focus on brushing her teeth because right now her teeth are little needles. Um, they're gonna, you know, she, they're gonna start falling out um, when she's a few months old and her adult teeth will start to erupt maybe when she's five months, uh, five, four, five, six months old. Um, and then that's when we really wanna start brushing her teeth. In the meantime, we're really gonna focus on having her accept, learning to accept having her teeth brushed. So um, like, I said, like I said before, we're gonna start by just touching her lip and just rolling, rolling this up um, and getting her to accept having her lip played with. Um, and then you can put your fingers in her mouth. Just rub, just a lot, a lot of rubbing. And then, <laughs> can I have my finger back, girl? Oh, 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 here you go. And then treats. Always, always show her that it's a, it's a very good thing. Um, when we also do this, we can start by touching her toes. So um, I, I wouldn't jump in and start doing her nail trims right away, but we can hold each toe, maybe do a little, little squeeze, and then give, give treats and rewards. This way she gets used to you touching her toes, um, and then hopefully in the long run it does make her uh, accept nail trims much easier. Good girl. Another thing that we can do for conditioning her uh, would be playing with her ears. Some dogs do need to have periodic ear cleaning as well. Um, so we can play with her, her ears, start rubbing them, just get, getting her used to um, knowing that it's okay to be touched and it is okay uh, to let us do these things because medically um, it will make uh, everybody's job easier and less stressful um, if the pet is uh, very accepting of these things. Good girl. Yes, you love these. Good girl, Stevie. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. She also wants a bottle, apparently. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> Stevie. <laughs> oh, she's a little spicy girl today. Different types of toothbrushes. And I mentioned that I do like the human toothbrushes or the pediatric ones for small cats and dogs. You will find on the market these finger brush kits. Um, 
the toothpaste is great, good and great. Um, and these are okay for conditioning your pet to accept handling of the mouth and getting uh, them used to you touching their teeth and their gums. Um, but they're not gonna be the best for actually teeth brushing. Um, we do, this would actually do the best job. These little nylon bristles, they're a little stiff. They are not going to get into that area in the gingival sulcus, which is between the teeth and the gums, um, but the soft bristle toothbrush would. So this is fine to start out, um, but we should really um, upgrade or advance to a toothbrush um, so we can actually get the area um, and treat the gingivitis. When you are choosing dental products, um, there, there are many different ones on the market. I would say look for ones that actually have a VOHC seal. And these products are proven to work. There are uh, lots of uh, very uh, long studies uh, that have actually proven these products have been tested. They've been through extensive trials um, and they're, they're proven to work. They have the studies behind them if you see this on your dental products. So dental diets, there are um, at least two of them that actually have this seal of uh, uh, VOHC. Um, Hills TD is one of them. Hills TD uh, the, the, uh, and Purina DH is the other one. The kibbles for a large breed are pretty big uh, and it's supposed to be that way. Uh, they come in two sizes. They come in a regular size, which is about that big, and then they have a small breed size, which maybe is about that big, which still seems a little bit big if you have a small, small dog. Um, but the way that that food is supposed to work is when the dog chews, chews the kibble, the, the way that the kibble is manufactured and binded together, uh, it's the teeth stick to um, the kibble just enough that the, it has to be pulled off by the tongue um, and then that removes some of the plaque buildup on the tooth. They refer to this diet as the edible toothbrush. So the more the pet chews, the, the, the technology behind the kibble grabs the tooth and when it's removed, it cleans it. So it removes the tartar. For those diets to actually work and be effective though, it needs to be at least 30% out of everything the pet eats. So they can be fed exclusively as a diet, um, or you can mix it with another food, maybe 50-50. Um, giving it just as a treat periodically or a few times a day will not get the benefit of that diet. So it needs to be a good amount of what they eat. Um, dental diets are great, they actually really do work. But if your pet has severe periodontal disease. And when I, when I mean that, I'm, I mean bone loss. So we have space between, between the, uh, the teeth and, and the gums and, if, and the gums are really red and you do see a lot of buildup along the teeth. This may not be the best thing to start right away because as the animal eats, it can, it can hurt them to eat. Stevie girl, what are you doing? It can hurt them to eat. So we don't want to cause pain. Um, a lot of these alternative products uh, are really, really good to use after they've been under anesthesia and had a professional dental cleaning by your veterinarian. Um, because with that, you're starting off on a clean slate and then prevention is what is important. So we're not treating the periodontal disease with, with all of these products, we're preventing it from going further. If your pet only has gingivitis, so we only see the redness along the gums and we don't have any, any loss of bone or mobile teeth, we can try to halt that process from developing and progressing into end-stage periodontal disease by getting a, a cleaning under anesthesia and um, by doing these home care products. So dental diets are great, a great alternative to teeth brushing. If we can't do dental diets, chews are great too. So we have um, the CET brand, which I'm a big fan of. They make a chew that are called Hextra CET chews. And one chew a day, uh, theoretically, um, reduces the bacteria in the mouth that actually causes periodontal disease. Um, chews and toys, rope toys, um, raw hides are actually uh, good for the teeth, but you need to look at the type of dog that you have. If they are a, a, a chewer, or like a gulp and swallow, that may not be the best choice. Um, but talk to us, talk to your doctor when you come in, uh, your veterinarian when you come in, and we can kind of help figure out what product is best for your dog. There are rinses and sprays. So there are sprays that you can use as an alternative to brushing, or you can use it with brushing. Spray up into the cheek area, once uh, in the morning and then once at night. And it's just lifting up the lip and then putting it back back into this area 
uh, right in that in that cheek pocket. Um, and then as the animal moves around, the tongue moves around, it's going to swoosh a lot of the product uh, throughout and distribute it throughout the mouth. Um, there are gel products, which are great for your little breeds, so your cats or your small dogs. And it's just going to be like one drop on each side, or you put a drop on your finger and then you can swipe it with your finger. Um, toothpaste too, and like I said, it's not necessary that you have to use toothpaste when you're brushing your pet's teeth um, because it does provide a distraction, but you can also use this as a reward. When you begin to brush your pet's teeth, you can put a little bit on your finger, have them lick it, do the teeth brushing, and then maybe give them a little bit after as a treat if your pet really likes this. We have water additives too. Um, these are good for pets that you can't do anything in the mouth. Maybe if they're just not tolerant or they don't want to be handled around their head. Um, it's a solution that you just apply to their drinking water and change the water out uh, uh, daily. Um, th this is good for pets that have a clean slate. So they've already had a dental cleaning under anesthesia and you need to do something to maintain um, and, 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 to maintain and uh, stop periodontal disease. That's something that you can try.